whenever we come to the presence of God with our worries and stress of day to day life i tell you when we run to the presence of God we are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy it happens when we meet the lord every day with the word of god Do you know that God wants us to live joyfully, cheerfully and happily every day, every moment of our life. World is full of sorrows and troubles and if we are not careful, it will take away our joy. Do you know that the scripture commands us to be joyful? It is a command in the Bible that believers be joyful. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 is sort of a command from Paul to rejoice always at least 17 times in Paul's epistle to the Philippines he's talking about rejoicing and have a joyful attitude Philippians chapter 2 verse 17 to 18 but even if i am being poured out like a drink offering look at his suffering he is in the jail and he's telling even if i am poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So joyfulness is a command of God and it is not dependent on our circumstances. Philippians 3.1 Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Another command. Philippians 4.4 4, Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say, rejoice not only when your grades are high not only when the bank balance is good even when things are bad we have reason to rejoice in the Lord there is no event or circumstance in the life of a man or a woman that can zap the joy of the Lord out of our heart at any circumstance at any situation we can be filled with the joy of the Lord why because joy is not circumstantial. Joy is that something comes out of our inside. The Bible says joy is a fruit of the spirit. And fruit develops from inside. Joy is an attribute or an attitude of heaven. It comes from above. It's not on the natural. But sadly, the world that we are living in is deprived of joy. And if you and I concentrate on the world, very soon we will lose our joy. There are a lot of joy stealers or enemies of joy that the world we are living in. And the number one enemy of joy is the stress of life. We have a lot of stress in our day-to-day -day life. And stress can come out of anything. You know what? According to NDTV survey... 50% of India's employees are under severe stress. That means 50% of the people are under severe stress. 60% of management staff, if you are a manager, team leader, or a VP or a president of a company, 60% of such people are under stress in India. 72% of children are in stress in India because of the educational system in our nation. Stress is all over there, even for children. 61% of IT professionals are under stress. 30% of IT professionals are addicted to narcotics because of stress. And look at this, this is alarming. 70% of IT guys are prone to heart disease all because of stress. And Paul is telling in between the stresses of life, then and today, you have to be happy. Otherwise, we cannot lead a good Christian life in this world. Paul, speaking about his hardships, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he is listing out a huge list of sufferings that he went through. And then in the midst of his stresses, Paul is telling, in verse 10, sorrowful, yet rejoicing, 
I am sorrowful. I am hard pressed. I have been beaten. I have been flogged. I am naked sometimes. I don't have food sometimes. I have been in prison. I have been in shipwreck. People beat me, misunderstand me. I am sorrowful but in the midst of everything. I have joy. I rejoice. Where does this joy come from friends? In the midst of our struggles and stresses, we have joy. Come to Philippians 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I will say, rejoice. Talking in the same context, Philippians 4.4. Now see Philippians 4.6 what it says. Do not be anxious about anything. Don't be stressed out about anything. But in every situation, good and bad situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Every day on our knees, we have a counselor. And when we pour out our concerns to God, like meeting a counselor every day, it takes care of the stresses of life. Very simple for a believer. We just get back to the presence of God. Don't worry about things. Get back to God's presence and prayer and petition give your things to God so that you need not be stressed. The second way people are losing joy is because of people. You know, when we are around people, there are various ways people can hurt us and abuse us. And I know that if you have lived long enough, you know how hurtful sometimes people are. Even our loved ones can be very hurtful. And many people base their joy on people. And when people fail, they lose all their joy. I heard a funny story like this about people zapping your joy. One man had a small injury in his chin and he went to the doctor's office. The receptionist had a very bad day. She had no joy. She didn't even look at this man. Said, you have come to meet the doctor? Yes, ma'am. Go to that room, to the corridor, the room on the right, change your dress, put on that gown and sit in that room. Madam, I have got a problem in my chin. Why should I remove my dress and put on your gown? He said, no, go to that right, take that room, change your dress, put on that gown and sit there. The third time he said, ma'am, it's just a small thing. Just a ch He started off the same drama. Go! And he ran. He ran to that corridor. He went to that right. And he saw a room full of patient's gowns. So he removed his dress. And he put on the gown. And he went to sit in the next room. And he saw another man with a gown over there. So he got very frustrated. I don't have to put on all this. I just got to see the doctor. He said, that lady is really crazy. I have come with a chin problem and she is telling me, remove my clothes and put on the gown and wait over here. That man said, I came to deliver UPS batteries. <laughs> Many times when we are around people, they can zap the joy out of our lives. But don't depend on people for our joy, friends. Jesus had all reasons to lose his joy because of people. You know, when Jesus in Matthew's gospel chapter 12, he cast out a demon from a man possessed with demon. You know what the Pharisees told him? This man is removing demons, casting out demons by the power of the devil himself. Beelzebub. That's what the word they used against Jesus Christ. What hurting. If Jesus was looking for people's approval, he would have never been happy in his life. He did only good, but all that came to him in his 33 and a half years of life is all negativity from people. John's Gospel, chapter 8, the Pharisees were constantly attacking him about the legitimacy about Jesus' birth, telling that you don't have a proper father, and kept on attacking him. How many times Jesus should have been in a pity party, losing his joy? He decided... I am not going to lose my joy based on what people are telling about me or what the circumstances are around me. You know, sometimes when you look at other people's sufferings, that can also take out your joy. Have you noticed that? Because this is so contagious. 
when you go through some negative people or when you go through people who are suffering and you come out that can also take out your joy and paul addressed such a thing in ephesians chapter 3 and it was 13 i ask you therefore do not be discouraged because of my sufferings paul was suffering and the church was discouraged they lost the joy and paul is telling you don't have to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you which were for your glory sometimes people can be real joy stealers and thirdly third joy stealers are the circumstances we all wait for the perfect circumstances for us to be joyful sadly we will never get a good circumstance to be always joyful we will go through ups and downs and we need to understand that we need to be joyful no matter what the circumstances is around us habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 18 look at the prophet's perspective over here though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes in the vines though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food nothing good over here though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls look at his perspective yet i will rejoice in the lord the concept is the lord you can always rejoice in the lord no matter what is not happening around you yet i will rejoice in the lord and i will be joyful in god my savior when i'm talking about joy i want to give you some aspects of joy facts of joy joy is not absence of difficulty understand you can never have a time when you have don't have any difficulty and be joyful joy is not the absence of difficulty jesus in fact said in john chapter 16 verse 33 in this world you will have trouble so joy is not the absence of difficulty but take heart jesus said i have overcome the world job said in job chapter 5 verse 7 yet man is born to trouble a surely a spark fly upward so there are troubles in this world but our joy is in spite of difficulties we face secondly joy is not denying your condition when i am talking about joy it doesn't mean that you get into a trance for some time and you lose your imagination and you lose your reality of life and you get into a trance and you become joyful no it doesn't mean that you deny your condition in spite of our condition in spite of everything that is happening we still can be joyful in the lord that's what paul said in philippians chapter 2 verse 17 to 18 but even if i am being poured out like a drink offering where is paul writing from he's writing from the prison and he's saying even if i'm poured like a drink offering on the sacrifice i am glad and i rejoice with all of you so how can we live in joy friends it's a very practical message how truly can we live in joy in other words what are the secrets of joy number one secret is to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. Because only God can give us joy. If anyone listening to me, you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you don't follow Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. You will never find joy. You will never find satisfaction. Happiness is different. Joy is different. Happiness is circumstantial. But joy comes only from the Lord. David said in Psalm 51 verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation in other words david is telling when i have salvation and i always have joy i lose my salvation i don't get into the salvation of god i don't have the joy of the lord first peter chapter 1 verse 8 the context over here is the suffering of the believers in rome and peter is exhorting them to look at your glorious salvation that is coming the hope of salvation and looking at the hope of salvation if first peter 1:8 says though you have not seen jesus you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and you are filled with inexpressible and a glorious joy who are these people suffering people they have been persecuted for the sake of the gospel but such people can have joy inexpressible and glorious if you have god on your side that joy comes only with a relationship 
with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The question is, are you in that relationship? If you're already in that relationship, are you in that presence of God? Are you maintaining that relationship with God? Stay in the presence of God. If you're already a child of God, are you in the presence of God? Stay in the presence of God. Psalms chapter 16 verse 11. You will show me the path of life, the psalmist said. In your presence is fullness of joy. That means when I am in the presence of God, I can be filled with heavenly joy. But when I move out of the presence of God, I can be zapped out of my joy. In the presence of God, is fullness of joy. Psalm 43 verse 4. Then I will go to the altar of God. To my God, my joy and my delight. So whenever we come to the presence of God with our worries and stress of day-to-day -day life, I tell you when we run to the presence of God, we are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. That happens when we meet the Lord every day with the word of God. When we go to our closet and start praying in the presence of God. When our heart is connected to heaven. When our hope and faith is set on above. Automatically heaven's hope and joy will be our joy. When we are in the presence of God. Second way. The secret of joy is to be patient in trials. Most believers lose joy in their trials or circumstances of life. Don't lose your joy in trials. That's the time you need to be even more glorious and joyful. Pastor, what are you telling? That's what the Bible says. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, so what is to be our attitude? Trials can come, sickness can come, hospitalization may happen, I may lose something, but in the midst of everything, when I am a child of God, I consider everything that happens to me for joy for me, because it's perfecting me, it's maturing me, it is making me into the likeness and image of God. Many people lose joy at such times. Pastor, what is good? There's no joy even to come to church because this has happened to me. But at that time, you need to be even more joyful. That's what the Bible says. That is a sign of a true Christian. Even though I go through problems and, and persecution, when I come to the presence of God, I have the fullness of joy. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of various kinds. In the gospel according to John chapter 13, we can find Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper, celebrating the Passover with the disciples. And then after celebrating the Passover, Jesus is talking to his disciples about his impending arrest and death. Oh, all of a sudden the disciples were worried. They were depressed. They were troubled. And more than that, Jesus said, Peter, you are going to deny me three times. Oh, there was a pin drop silence in that upper room. Why? Because Jesus is going to die. What will we do about our future? How soon the circumstances have changed. The thought pattern has changed. But do you see Jesus? From chapter 14 onwards, he is living out a discourse. He is giving a preaching to his disciples who are troubled. And he starts chapter 14 and telling them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Look at the attitude of Jesus. He knows, being God, that that night he is going to be betrayed. That night Jesus is going to be arrested. The next day he is going to be crucified for no fault of his. Knowing the trouble that is coming on him, knowing the trouble of his disciples, Jesus is talking in chapter 14, 15 and 16, eight times he's talking about joy. What is the joy? That is the joy in the midst of trials. Look at Jesus' words. John chapter 15 verse 11, the same discourse. I have told you this, 
so that my joy in the midst of this crucifixion jesus telling i have got joy my joy may be in you that your joy may be complete john chapter 16 verse 20 very truly i tell you you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices you will grieve but your grief will turn into joy john chapter 16 verse 22 now is the time of your grief let me ask you can we grieve yes we can grieve the death of a loved one or something like that but we don't have to be grieving always jesus told his disciples now is the time of your grief you know why look at that but i will see you again and you will rejoice because for 3 days jesus is not going to be with them if jesus is not with us we have to grieve it's not for us he is talking to his disciples that i am going for 3 days i'm going to be dead and gone for 3 days but i'll come back that 3 days you are going to grieve now is the time for your grief but i will come back i will see you and you will rejoice no one will take away your joy now where is christ christ is in us christ is with us he is living and now the bible says there is no more need to grieve no one can take away our joy because the joy of the lord nehemiah said is our strength so joyful in persecution joyful in nothingness that is the attitude of a child of god we don't lose our joy look at this how beautifully jesus said blessed are you when people insult you in other words happy are you happy must be you when people insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me you are my child and when you go through a trouble you should find it joyful and verse 12 says rejoice and be glad look at how jesus is working much much contrary to the joy of the world When you go through a trouble rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven you don't look at the earthly circumstances your faith your hope from first peter i told you is in god and when you go through those situations and accusations and nothingness great is your reward in heaven and so you rejoice the next way we can be having our joy is to stay morally upright There is one legitimate way how our joy can be zapped that is only by sin. Sin is the only reason why believers lose their joy. Psalm 32:11 Rejoice in the Lord and be glad you righteous sing all who are upright in heart. When we are upright in heart we will be joyful. When we are not right in heart when there is sin sorry there is no joy. That's what the Bible says. The only reason for joy to go is sin. Psalm 51 was 8. Let me hear joy and gladness. David said when he sinned with Bathsheba, let the bones you have crushed rejoice. So when we sin, God takes away the joy. That's why he said in verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation. We lose our joy because of lack of contentment. you know that we are never satisfied with things clothes gadgets we are never satisfied and the wanting of more and more in this rat race we lose our joy i heard the story of a pilot who is to go from his hometown to another city every day and come back so the senior pilot when he comes to one particular location he would look down for a minute or two and then he would continue with his piloting work his co-pilot always noted him every day at that particular point up and down he will look down he is a senior man the junior asked the senior sir i've observed you for the last one month when the flight comes to one particular location you keep looking down and you give the job to me and after that even by the return trip you do the same what is the secret he said my friend that's where i grew up now i'm living in the city and you see the valleys over there 
And in one of those valleys, those streams, as a young boy, I used to sit with a fishing rod and fish. And that time when I was fishing, I would think when I can fly up in an aeroplane. Now when I pass through this aeroplane, I'm sitting up and thinking when I can go down and start fishing all over again. Man is like that. We are never content in whatever situations we have. And only if we can learn the art of contentment can we learn to rejoice in the Lord. We will have every perfection in heaven. Be content with what God has given to you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 12. This is a key verse. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Come to Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Many people, even ministry people, find satisfaction in ministry and they feel that if ministry goes well, they can be happy. And here are Jesus' disciples coming back after a good ministry. And Jesus is telling, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. When you do a marvelous ministry, don't rejoice. But what is the source of our rejoicing? But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That is where that gives us joy in our lives. Friends, one son was playing with a marble in his house. And as he was playing with marble, he saw his mother doing embroidery. And he observed from down what mom is doing. Mommy, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. It is all haphazard and different colors. Mommy said, son, I'm not finished yet. You go out, play and come back. So he went, played and came back and started playing his marble. And again he saw mommy doing embroidery. Mommy, it doesn't make any sense. It's not good. What is that you're wasting your time? Mommy said, come to the sofa, son. And he climbed to the place where she was sitting. He said, look from here. Oh, beautiful sunset and a wonderful flower. He never saw that perspective when he was seeing from down. And many times, we lose our joy in life because we are looking at from all our perspective. We are seeing the little pieces here and there and we lose joy. But God says, look at my perspective. You are precious to me. You are my masterpiece. Everything fits together according to my plan and purpose in your life. And when you can just trust yourself into my hands, you will not be without joy. You will be filled with everlasting joy.